Have you ever sat down to tackle a simple task, like answering one email, only to find yourself three hours later still staring at a blank screen, having refreshed your inbox a dozen times and wandered off to research unrelated stuff? Suddenly, the day's shot, your to-do list is longer, and you're beating yourself up for being lazy. But guess what? That's not laziness, it's procrastination and it's wired into our brains like a sneaky survival hack from caveman days. In today's world, it's amplified by endless distractions, turning small delays into full-blown productivity black holes. We're all guilty of feeding this monster, living in a cycle of avoidance that leaves us stressed and unfulfilled. As you may already know, I'm the first one who used ChatGPT to create a consistent stick figure character. Until now, I've made four stick figure tutorial videos, and three of them have gone viral on YouTube. In the first video, I did everything manually inside the GPT chat box, generating each image one by one. In that video, I realized that the ChatGPT image one model not only keeps the character consistent, but also matches the image perfectly with the script context. Then in my second video, I created a Python script to generate all the images using the OpenAI API key, because I didn't want to sit there waiting for image after image. Then in the third video, I made a tutorial to help my members make videos more dynamic. I used layer masks and keyframes for each element to make the video very engaging, just like what you're seeing here. But every method had one big problem. After the images are generated, the editing process still takes a lot of time. And this is really the biggest pain point for any faceless creator. So I tried using make.com to build a pipeline from script to image. After a few weeks of testing, I saw that it's not really helpful for this kind of purpose. You not only have to pay a lot for the Make.com subscription, but also for every API platform you connect to. It's the same story with N8N. I wouldn't say it's helpful. It just makes you spend more time trying, learning, and then realizing it's not worth it. From that point, I knew I had to build something myself, not only for my members, but also to create a system that really solves this YouTube automation game. And that's why Gary Studio was created. At the very first version, Gary Studio already helped members leverage ChatGPT Plus to generate images in the background without having to type prompts one by one. But now, with this version, I'm really proud that with this AI tool, you can create videos like the demo you're watching with very, very little effort. And I can even say it's almost just a matter of clicking. So why does that work? And why is this the only AI tool you really need for your faceless AI channels? First, from version V2.0, you can transcribe your voiceover file into segments. This is super important for high quality content because just by doing this, each generated image can match exactly with each script segment. After the prompts are generated, as you can see, everything is controlled by the segment script. It's not like my previous method, where I had to input a very long script and use just a single prompt. In that way, the AI platform couldn't really understand the whole storyboard, so the images didn't always fit the context. Then you had to trim images or videos manually in the editor just to get a great final output. But by splitting everything segment by segment, the prompts for text to video or image to video become very accurate and very high quality. And the best part is, the whole thing can be automated. I don't have to trim anything in editing software anymore. Now, look at my storyboard screen in Gary Studio V 2.0. These are all the storyboards I've generated. And let me tell you, it's working like a charm right now. Let me walk you through how I use this to create any type of content, not only stick figures, but also for any faceless niche, from philosophy to kids' stories, from storytelling to finance to 3D history. It all works perfectly now. First thing first, I'll start right away from the voiceover in this video. After you already have your voiceover ready, you just click on the Create Storyboard button on the top right corner. If you're wondering like, I don't have a script, or I don't have any voiceover yet, you can check out my other videos where I explain this part and share a lot of tutorials. For scripting, you can generate 100% of your video script using AI tools like ChatGPT, Perplexity, or Claude AI. These are the best scripting tools right now. Or you can use my copywriting prompt. Just copy the script of any video from a channel you like, paste it below the prompt, adjust the audience, tone of voice, and total words so you can control the video length. You can also write the script by yourself without depending on AI. For me, it's actually very enjoyable, and I do it when I have some free time. But when you're too busy, just let AI help you, because sometimes the quality can even be better than what you write. 
it's the same for voiceover. It's all about your testing and trying. Just try using Eleven Labs or Minimax Audio and find a voice that matches your script's tone. You can generate the voiceover on the Eleven Labs platform, or you can generate it directly in Gary Studio, because in this version, I've already integrated both. As you can see on this screen, you can pick Eleven Labs or Minimax Audio. You can change all the voiceover settings on the right panel, just like on the original platforms. Everything is working perfectly now. You can choose any of your voices, and you can even trim silence without audacity in this modal. Now let's try with a sample script in the text-to-speech box and see how it goes. We spend our 20s chasing what we think matters. Fancy job titles, Instagram-worthy experiences, and the perfect relationship. All right, I'm going to go back to the All Storyboards screen, and I'm going to create a new storyboard now. To create a storyboard, first I need to browse to my voiceover file. By default, the voiceovers folder inside the Gary Studio folder will be opened. And as you can see here, these are all the voiceover files generated via Gary Studio. If you generated your voiceover somewhere else, just browse to that file on your PC and select it. Next, you're going to see an option that lets you control the segment length. Because I'm working on a stick figure style video, I'll just leave it at the default. But if you're working on another niche, like sleep storytelling, you should increase this value based on your needs. Then I'll click save. Now you should see another pop-up appear, and it will show all the segments with timestamps for you to review. You can delete any segment if you want. For now, I'll just click save one more time. And now, my storyboard is already created. Because we haven't generated any images yet, the storyboard thumbnail is still blank like this. If you right-click on any storyboard icon, you'll see four options. You can open the storyboard folder, duplicate it, rename it, or delete it. These are just basic features to help you manage everything easier. To create all the segment images or videos for any storyboard, just click on the script and image tab to go to this screen. From version 2.0, there are a lot of improvements and customization options here, but I won't go too deep into every detail. What I'm going to do now is turn on this option for generate storyboard images. After that, you should see all your storyboards listed here again, so you can pick one. Just double click on the storyboard you just created to select it. Then I'm going to turn on use reference image as well, and I'll browse to my stick figure image style. For this video, I use this stick figure with the red tie. You can design any stick figure using ChatGPT or any other image model you like. For this stick figure, I saw the style from Wise Joe's latest video. I thought it looked cool, so I tried to recreate it using ChatGPT. I already tested with Google Banana Pro, and these are the images I got. For me right now, there are two image models you should use if you want high-quality, consistent character images, GPT Image One and Google Banana Pro. Each one has pros and cons, but if you use these two, you can get very high quality and stable results. I also tried Grok AI. From Grok AI 4.1, Grok AI can animate stick figures very well, but for creating actual stick figure images, it still doesn't work well, as you can see from my results. And for most of the other models out there right now, honestly, it's not really worth the time to try. Next, what you're going to do is just input the prompt inside this image prompt field. And this is the prompt I used, minimalist, thin line, hand-drawn stick figure style with a fun, meme-like tone. Keep the character consistent with the attached image and avoid adding too many elements in each image. Then just click Generate to generate all the images. The tool will automatically run in the background and generate all the images for you with almost no effort. You can stop the process anytime and you can start again later. When you resume, it will continue the task from where it stopped. While we're waiting for all the images to finish generating, I want to remind you that I'll also pick five comments under this video to try Gary Studio V 2.0 totally free for two weeks, so don't miss this chance. Gary Studio is built for private members inside the school community. It's created by solving real members' struggles, and there's no extra cost for image generation or video rendering. You can render videos directly inside the app or via After Effects with very high quality without paying for any extra subscription. Now that all the images are generated, I'm going to click on this storyboard and show you all the features again inside this system. On the top right, you're going to see the Validate button. This button is used to check and validate your storyboard. For this storyboard, everything looks consistent and correct. That means you can go ahead and render it to video using Local Render or AE Render. Now, to show you how this works, I'm going to open the storyboard folder. In this folder, I'll delete one of the images. For example, 
Maybe you don't like a specific image, or the image is blurry, or it doesn't match the scene. You can simply delete that image from the folder. After deleting, I'll reopen this storyboard inside Gary Studio. Now you can see that the deleted image is also missing from the timeline. Next, I'm going to click the validate button again. And as you can see, it shows a warning telling us exactly which images are missing, the same ones we just deleted. To generate those missing images again, we just go back to the script and image tab, turn on generate storyboard images, and select the same storyboard again. But this time, you don't need to turn on use reference image, and you don't need to type anything in the image prompt box. The reason is, in the JSON file, we already have all the metadata and prompts stored for each segment. So now, all you need to do is keep it simple and just click Generate. The app will automatically generate all the missing images for you. Now let's go back to the previous storyboard that already has all the images in the timeline at the bottom. If you right-click on any image, you'll see a few options. First, we can use this function to animate any image in the timeline. As you can see here, you can use some of the best models for image-to-video generation right now, like Kling AI, Grok AI, Hilo AI, and Google VO3. Because this storyboard is a stick figure style, you actually don't need to animate it. For me, using images only is the best choice for this type of content. If you try to animate it, it just takes more time but is less effective. In addition, you can replace an image with another one by clicking here. Then, you can browse to any image or video on your PC, and it will be used in the current storyboard and the current segment. Each time you change something, the history is saved. When you click on Show Variations right here, you can see all the footage that was used in this segment. If you want to go back to the original image, just click Use Image, and the original image will be restored easily. Now, I'm going to show you the final features that let you render your storyboard into a full video. First, let's try Local Render by clicking on this button. You'll see that the app automatically runs the storyboard validation again. If the storyboard is not valid, the Continue and Render button will be disabled so you'll know something needs to be fixed before rendering. Next, you can see the output size options. Right now, it supports 16 by 9 landscape, which is perfect for YouTube long-form videos. If you're making content for shorts, Instagram reels, you can use 9 by 16. But because this storyboard uses landscape images, we need to pick 16 to 9 here. Then you can choose some simple effects like zoom in, zoom out, black fade, or white fade. You can even adjust the zoom percentage and the fade duration to match your style. But for this stick figure style, I actually recommend not using these effects, just keeping it simple. Now let's click on the render button so the app can start building the video for you. You can track the render status by clicking on the tracking tasks icon on the top right. And remember, this feature uses your PC hardware to render the video, just like CapCut or any editing software, so you can render it at any video length as well. If you render using this feature, or even if you render using CapCut, you'll see one very annoying problem, and that's the size issue. When you generate images with GPT Image 1, you can't directly create them in 16 to 9 ratio. The images are always in 3 to 2 ratio. I'm going to open CapCut to show you this more clearly. As you can see on the screen, when you drop a 3 to 2 image into a 16 to 9 timeline, you'll see two black bars on the left and right sides of the video. To fix this in CapCut, you have to zoom each image to around 119%. But when you do that, and your stick figure character is already very tall in the frame, you start losing important parts of the image. Some key details can get cropped out. Then, you have to replace that image, try another one, and it becomes really frustrating. In local rendering inside Gary Studio, I already zoomed the images for you so they can fill the 16 by 9 frame used by YouTube long-form content. But with local rendering, we still can't magically turn a 3x2 image into a true 16x9 ration the way a pro editor can. With After Effects Render, this problem is much easier to fix. In After Effects, or any professional video editor like Final CapCut or DaVinci Resolve, you can control the scale and position of each image in a more flexible way. You can adjust it to fit different ratios properly, something that simple editors can't fully support. In these types of software, you can only use uniform scaling, so you can never completely fix this issue. When rendering with After Effects, the cool thing is you don't have to do anything manually, but the final result is already fixed from 3 to 2 ratio to 16 to 9 ratio for you. All you need to do is click Upload, and then my system will collect the current storyboard and upload it to a private Google Drive. This is a shared drive I created just for this purpose. After the video files are uploaded, 
I also have a continuous job running that listens to this folder. If there's any new file there, it will automatically download it, unzip the file, and render the video for you in 16 by 9 ratio without any issues. Then, back in Gary Studio, all you're going to do is click History, go to the After Effects tab, click the Download button, and the video will be downloaded to your computer. Yeah, all of these features are already working perfectly, and you won't see this anywhere else on the internet right now. This is the only AI automation system I built for my members, and it's the only system that really works for YouTube automation with high quality results. Everything is integrated right now, so you can just use it and generate faceless videos with very, very minimal effort. So I think that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you like it. Don't forget to comment below so you can get a free trial to use Gary Studio right now. If you want to speed up your content creation on YouTube, if you want to use Gary Studio and get one by one support directly from me, you can join the school community now. There are lots of posts, tutorial videos, script templates, and image styles, so you can start right away without feeling frustrated as a beginner. Thank you so much again. If you like this video, click like and share it with others, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more videos like this.